Hey there, this is Manisha. Growing up in India, all of us have been asked this question by assorted aunts and uncles. What do you want to be when you grow up? Most common responses were doctor, engineer, lawyer, chartered accountant, sometimes veterinarian, and nowadays YouTuber. Today, I have a question for you. Growing up, did you ever want to be a politician? You think I'm crazy. My guest today is a third generation politician in Uttar Pradesh. Rahul Kaushik, a design consultant with a master's degree from IIT Bombay, chucked it all to carry forward the legacy of his father. Today, he is the Pradesh Karyakarini Sadasya of the Samajwadi Party. Welcome to the show, Rahul Kaushik. Rahul, tell me a little bit about your family history and how your family came to serve India. Social service kind of runs in the family. My Nana ji, maternal grandfather, was a freedom fighter in 1920. He was studying actually medicine at Grand Mandel College, Bombay. But in 1920, when Gandhiji gave the call of non-cooperation, he quit that and joined the freedom struggle, became a part of Congress party. In 1936, uh, during the provincial elections, he contested from Harda MP and got elected as an MLA. But later on, after within, I think, two years, Congress quit all those uh, governments. Then on Gandhiji's advice, he actually quit politics and uh, joined with Vinova Bhaveji to serve in Sarvodaya movement. Uh, you can say a streak of social service activities runs in the family. We being uh, in politics is, rather I coming into politics is incidental, not actually intentional. My father... When he went to do his uh, graduation in Lucknow University, he came in touch with uh, Acharya Narendra, who was beaming a beacon of socialist movement in uh, Congress, within Congress, and later on, uh, Socialist Party. Under his guidance, he joined Dr. Lohia later on, and then became a member of socialist movement. He started contesting elections, I think, from 67 got elected to state assembly in 1977 after the emergency elections. During emergency, two, three generations of my family was jailed for standing against the uh, Indira Gandhiji's emergency and those things. My father then became minister. He was, he was handling health and excise ministry. So among his friends, he was called Dawadaru Mantri. Dawadaru so Mantri. <laughs> 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 he was health minister as well as the excise minister. He um, got elected to assembly twice. He was member of um, legislative council. He uh, became minister, cabinet minister multiple times in government of UP. And in 1993, along with Primulayam Singh Yadavji and others, he founded Samajwadi Party. His last responsibility has been as a member of parliament, Rajya Sabha. All of us in my family are very keen observers of political activities. But my father never discussed anything related to politics or his politics inside the house, in the home. It was always a step out of the home. If I remember correctly, he never discussed his politics with any member of the family for that matter. Only my mama could schedule and drag him into some kind of discussions related to politics. During his lifetime, I was remotely related to political activities, such as joining an election campaign or being a backroom activities. But after his demise, when I, I was running a design consultancy in Pune at the time, and after his demise, when I came to our native place, there were two reasons for which I was forced to join politics. One was a demand for, from the local uh, people, followers, Koshigi, who really wanted me to stay back. Samajwadi party leadership also asked me to stay back and uh, join political activity. More so, the reason being that People felt kind of vacuum. He was a, my father was a big figure political, uh, in political circles of Uttar Pradesh. So a lot of people were his followers, he still are. They kind of felt uh, a vacuum when uh, he passed away. And it was a huge vacuum for them because they had no other uh, direct connection with any political leader. They never needed to. So this kind of uh, bridge, the role I uh, I saw myself to be, I stood back. 
and then joined political activities, became active member of Samajwadi Party and then was nominated to state executive of the party, and I still am. Then the election of Lok Sabha election of 2009 happened and that was the first time that I actually very actively went for the canvassing and campaigning for a party. So that's how I'm in politics. So you're a reluctant politician in terms of your entry, but now you're <laughs> firmly entrenched and you have very big shoes yeah. to fill. Uh, yes, definitely. And there is no comparison. I mean, people do compare sometimes my father, but his uh, stature is far too big. I mean, I, I really cannot fit into those shoes, but in some way, a small way, I can fill the gap for the people. And I did. During 2012 election, I wanted to contest assembly election, but uh, some political equations, which doesn't seem to uh, be working out for leadership. So they, uh, I mean, decided not to uh, allow me to contest and uh, adjust me in some other way. But we have four seats in our district, four assembly seats. Two of the tickets were given on my recommendations and the uh, responsibility was mine to get them elected. Both these seats we won and uh, two of the MLAs kind of became leader here for uh, the whole group of uh, followers. So it was uh, the role which I saw for myself till that time was that much, that uh, I could do something to have some stay in the power with people of Babuji's following. That's it. I still want to contest, but let's see how things work out. I'm not sure. There are those who contest elections and who get elected. And then there is stellar yeah. stellar support cast that actually goes mm-hmm. ahead and ensures everything is, you know, right. the stage is set, right? right? So right now, right. Right. your role is of stellar support. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will sell yourself short. What I'm particularly interested in is to understand the science of politics. Right. Because from the outside, one really doesn't know what goes on in politics. I mean, you guys, whatever you do or whatever you say comes out in the news. And there's a lot that does not come out in the news, too, at least in mainstream media. What does a typical day look like for a politician? For me, this is quite rare because from a professional setup, when you come where there is no no regular uh, things very difficult for me it's uh, not something very systematic at least during the normal times during election campaign it is very very systematic because then i control things for where i want to go what time i want to go getting phone calls in the night midnight of just uh, saying hello to people uh, coming in ones or twos and fifties and hundreds to see you without even giving you any intimation is is that kind of thing sometimes it's, it's quite clearly free time. There is no one around. But the issue is whether you do things or you don't do things. Whether you uh, meet people or not meet people. The such light is always on you. You are judged all the time. You are observed all the time. And everything related to you is discussed. You may come to know about it or you may not. I am not very early riser, unlike my father who was a very early riser. And people used to come at early morning, 5, 5.30 to meet him. I make myself available from around 8, 8.30. And then I have kept no reservations open all the time throughout the day till 9, 10 in the night, whenever people feel like they come and meet. Though I know people, my father, there are other senior people who keep a very strict schedule in the sense of meeting people, that, but they can, they are in the position to do that. I am in a younger lot. Not not exactly young, but in a younger lot. And when senior people uh, come, I had to go. I had to meet them. I cannot say that I am busy or something. Like that. So it's unstructured. Your time is not yours. Yeah. And people yeah, can definitely. and people expect, <clears throat> at least in India, <clears throat> that you are available to them, no matter the time and no matter your convenience. Uh, this is how this is how it works out. Except when they know definitely that you have a public engagement, which happens typically during election campaign. They know that it's a very fixed schedule. And so during those times, they, I mean, kind of allow you to do your own things and join you. But apart from that, if there is no public engagement and you are not visiting, let's say, going Lucknow or Delhi, then they expect you to be available uh, all the time. So what do they come to you for? 
I mean, when when you meet people, there is an agenda. There is, I mean, what what happens besides meeting people? What do you do? All kind of things. People can come or do come for all kind of things. As I said, they just call you in the middle of the night to say hi. How are you? I have not <laughs> spoken to you since long. बहुत दिन हो गए आपसे नहीं मिले. Then there are political uh, workers, party associates or party colleagues who come to talk about various issues related to party. Uh, there are uh, aspirants for various things, party post or election uh, or ward or uh, gram pradhan elections for that. People do come for work, but I'm not talking about my party workers or colleagues. But people in general definitely know how much influence you have in a particular government. So now my party is not in power, so people will not come make me call police or SDM or DM. When party was in power, they knew that okay, he can uh, do Get things. Get things done. So for those, ah, huh, so for that, there are personal. Uh, issues too for which people come to you for sorting that things out do bhaiyo ke beech mein jhagda ya parivar mein kuch hua hai for that kind of thing also people come then there are few which i have to tell you who come for finding out what you are up to okay in guise of uh, just to say hello to you and then uh, judge your attitude for particular thing or particular election and then that goes out people do come for uh, giving advice is to know that you are making some moves okay out of passion out of compassion i would say uh, one of the election i was going to multiple villages of particular community jat so advice was given to me yaad rakhna wo ikke ki sawari hai aur jat ki yari hamesha takleef deti hai thoda translate okay ikka yani is is tonga हाँ, okay. हाँ. So, उसमें जब आप सवारी करते हैं तो इस ऑलवेज वेरी बम्पी करेक्ट तो इक्के की सवारी और जाट की आ रही फ्रेंडशिप इज जाट वो याद रखो ये हमेशा तकलीफ देते हैं सो ऑल काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स हैपन पीपल हैव देयर ओन व्यूज ऑफ पर्टिकुलर कम्युनिटी और पर्टिकुलर पर्सन दे कम एंड टेल यू ओके सो यू हैव टू लिसन यू हैव टू टेक योर ओन जजमेंट एंड ऑल दैट आई हैव लॉर्ड ऑफ जाट कलीग्स आई हैव लॉर्ड ऑफ जाट फ्रेंड्स in uh, close friends close followers so it doesn't matter but people <laughs> do come for and tell you all these things so matlab aapka your your day is 24 hour surveillance it's almost like aap big boss ke ghar mein hain you can say that you can say that so in all of this how does a politician set goals now if you're in power then there is an agenda then you know government machinery and bureaucracy and all of that uh, works when you're not in power how does a politician set goals how do you monitor progress and what are the success parameters it depends it's, i think it's person to person a lot of people start into politics with the aim of getting elected to some post and that's it i know people like me they have a lot of uh, passion for social service i mean like uh, when uh, our party was in power here in uttar pradesh under akhilesh ji's chief ministry i had suggested uh, for my region to be a it hub next to noida for up because it's very close to delhi we already have industrial estate here so but it didn't work out so during that time apart from i mean getting people some job or for interview suggesting or things like that or getting transfers or these things keep happening that's regular but if you have vision you can always always try to do that a lot of things get done i am not saying in this instance it didn't happen but a lot of things can happen yeah as you ask goal kya hai goal is personal for me is uh, more of was filling the vacuum left by my father's demise get some people into the position get some people into the government who can uh, really serve the group here then uh, till that time yes that was now i do understand that getting elected is essential in our uh, democratic setup to get a lot of things done so my goal is to get elected somehow and test selection if possible again for me goal is to keep his legacy alive okay so as people say mla mp bahut ban jate hain neta banna bahut mushkil hai har koi neta nahi ho sakta so this is a leader of public leader of people which is what my father was because i i still see after his demise of i think is 12 years now uh, and i am not in any power position i never held any elected post but 
I conduct a program, then there are thousands who come. I can say that I want to be a Neta, not only an MLA or MP. But a lot of people get into politics just to be MLA or MP and is increasing day by day. It's, it's not only social service for which people come into the politics today. Aim or goal of your political life is quite personal, I think, for everyone. Don't think that that should be the only aim. Uh, being Having a soft power, people power, people behind you is very important for me. Whether I get elected or no, I would like to be among people get, I mean, share their, share their lives or personally connect with them, uh, give them sort of a strength of voice to the upper echelon of power. That is what I really, my aim is. So you're saying that there is a purpose and everyone's purpose sort of guides, that, that pretty much guides all of our actions, yeah. right? In any profession yeah. that we take. Yeah. And different yeah. people are in it for different motives. Some are in it for the money. Yeah. Some are in it for the power. Yeah. And some are in it for purely because they want to give or they want to contribute. Yeah. And they want to create an impact, right? The yeah. rewards yeah. are not material immediately for them, or at least they are not quantifiable in the immediate future. But the impact that they want to create is very different. So that's essentially what you're saying. You right? have uh, summarized very well. Yeah. But you're also saying that the impact that one can have as a politician is largely when one is in power. And that's primarily the first yeah. step or rite of passage for someone to create long lasting impact to a large swath of people. Mm-hmm. Now, we see a lot of uh, movies and the kind of politician that's actually portrayed in movies is this <laughs> big, you know, either he's big or he's Machiavellian or he's power hungry and he's always scheming, right? So he's not really standing for mm-hmm. people, although he says he's standing for people. Now, what's your reaction to that trope? <laughs> there is some truth in it. There are people like that, but uh, you can uh, not generalize. There are people who are uh, very down to earth, who are very uh, average person, not not looking for such kind of power or money. Today, uh, we have a person, uh, I, am, I am from IIT. There are many people who are who have lead their professional lives and then join politics, who uh, are very well educated, who are passionate enough about social work. So I, I wouldn't say that they are completely wrong portraying that kind of image, but that is a small, very small portion of uh, all of the lot of political uh, people. You touched upon an important, what should I say, profile there. You said that yeah. there are educated people and there are also people who have, who wield a lot of soft power. This means that there is sufficient amount of influence that p- people wield without necessarily the positional authority? For me, that is the reason, that is the aim. I train for people, I do things for them, and uh, I am looking for that kind of power. I am not looking for uh, becoming a multimillionaire or uh, having a passion of, uh, I mean, rolling in the cars and having commandos around me. There, you would see, today is the fashion that every... Shudbhaiya Neta also wants two commandos or two police wallahs along with him. They, they think that that's the kind of uh, image which people like. There are people who like that kind of thing, but they are minuscule. But even if you go walk alone on the road and people know who you are, then there is a huge respect because they know that is a person who commands a, a place. For me, soft power is more important than all that kind of... So, 12 years in normal life is a huge, long uh, time and political life is too long. 12 years, if you are uh, struggling, then 12 years is very small. But if you have to forget someone, 12 months are enough. But if, if, if uh, that legacy, I mean, continues even after 12 years, there's the kind of uh, power in the heart of people that is what I am looking for. That is what I aim for. Okay, so I read this line in uh, a Scientific American article called Science Has Always Been Inseparable from Politics. That's the title. And he goes on to mm-hmm. say that science has been linked to the politics of society since the first person thought it was a good idea to do research and then convince their neighbors to give them money to do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so as a politician, uh-huh. a lot of what you do is about convincing yeah. people to support and then fund your cause. 
how do you go about doing it actually funding the cause only happens to my mind when you are contesting an election yeah there are few activities for uh, i mean uh, organizing large meetings and things like that for, for which you need fund then there are people who who come and give money but all that depends the cause what is the cause if cause is close to the heart of people if your uh, purpose is what they believe in then convincing people and raising money doesn't matter i remember uh, money was not such a big thing in those times in 70s political life and people really didn't have money and the campaigning used to happen on bullock carts and on foot and on cycle uh, the food served at uh, our house for workers was only khichdi or dal roti nothing and people used to do but even those during those times they used to donate money 1 rupya 5 rupya 10 10 rupees was a big thing so when my father used to return from campaigning he used to kind of uh, empty his pockets and used to give us count and put it so they you that used to be 1 rupees okay but who is giving and how many are giving that is more important okay uh, today if if somebody uh, let's say um, industrial power house is behind you they can do corporate behind you for some reason they want you to elect it so they can fund whole of your campaign but i would rather have 1 rupee or 10 rupee from 10000 people than 1 lakh or 10 lakh from a corporate to convince people is to connect with them first there are various things with which you can connect only then people listen to your talk or to what you are saying okay and if they are connected with you it becomes very easy to convince them then they know what you are saying they are open to your views they are open to listen to you unless you are connected with them and just go on a stage and talk however good things uh, people listen clap but they will go home without taking any impression of you or without even agreeing to you okay first thing is get connected I mean, if in my case it was not so difficult initially because uh, they had seen something uh, related to a person whom they had admired but keeping that connection on for 10 12 years is what it takes the efforts by me in this case one is that second money as i said okay uh, if they believe in your cause if they believe in you that uh, you would be a good representative then uh, people are very open to support you by uh, by uh, labor by money by all means now glamour is a big part of your profession at least that's what uh, one sees in the public face of it <laughs> <laughs> on the one hand you are saying that average common man is very perceptive he wants to feel connected yeah. with the person standing in front of him and if he's going to give 30 minutes of his time to someone then he wants to know what is it that you're going to do and what do you stand for the other way of conducting politics yeah. is this throw big money and buy your uh, yeah. loyalty or your time right uh, so that's the yeah. other one which yeah. is which is which yeah. is also the way a whole lot of campaigns on social media or whatever are driven and then you yeah. have the third yeah. one which is the celebrity driven campaigning which is let's get you these big celebrity to right. see and right. then then you come because yeah. you want to see the celebrity not because the celebrity has to say something meaningful oh. to you but you just want to see them yeah. in in the flesh and blood yeah but i mean uh, as i said the important thing is the connect with the people okay celebrities i would not denounce right away but i i really don't uh, agree to what party does parties do to get these personalities elected but i would definitely say that they also have a connect with people during their earlier career they had a connect so that connection is being uh, reaped i have not very favorable view of these people getting into politics because one is indian politics is uh, still a ground reality jaise hum kehte hain zameeni cheez hai ye it has a difference Uh, as in probably american or british uh, politics where probably that kind of thing is not there these people do get elect uh, with their stardom power but their connect actually uh, political connect with the people never happens this is uh, always very i mean superficial. superficial as i said 
connection with the people connect how whether you get connect with your professional work or with your political activities is immaterial in one or two elections definitely your previous professional connection can uh, give you that kind of result but i think not every time very rarely right now you have the uh, us elections going on in november november 2020 the us election will kick off yeah all yeah, right, right right so when you look at the us elections a lot of children school children and college kids get involved in mm. the campaigning or in the uh, getting the electoral list done or door to door handing out pamphlets and stuff like that in indian politics i haven't seen too many children getting involved in it maybe college kids for <laughs> sure but uh-huh. not children why is that first of all is this uh, correct and second is why is that okay i wouldn't say it's 100% correct in india okay as children we did all those things electoral rolls and pamphlets distribution and everything when i was kid there are two scenarios here one is which i blame to english media and uh, middle class uh, kind of understanding which has been built that politics is bad hmm. okay every politician is bad hmm. so that's the uh, culture or that's the understanding the city people have okay i would differentiate between urban and rural atmosphere mm-hmm. so in urban areas you wouldn't see you would hardly see any kid getting involved in uh, activities in rural areas it not so children go definitely uh, very energetically they they come to your meetings too okay a lot of meetings happen in smaller uh, places I mean, when you go during campaigning a small village of 500 or 100 uh, houses and then all children come and uh, if you give them uh, publicity material they happily take and go and they uh, drop it to every place uh, is not a professionally managed activity is is spontaneous and enjoyable activity kind of thing for kids and they do it they may not understand what it is and they may not know so sometimes they do know you and very well i mean i have experiences of 6 or 7 year old kid coming to me and telling me that oh aap unke ladke hain main janta hu kya so, baat hai that kind of thing ha huh? <laughs> urban uh, situation is completely different where uh, you, you wouldn't even see lot of people uh, i mean not only younger but elder people they even don't like to i mean take part in political activities for lot of people taking part in politics is only to get some connection or power connection or be in in the eyes of the powerful person so that's the aim for general public but not so so much in rural area rural area politics touches the uh, life of every single person very intimately so they are very very conscious they are very uh, aware of what they want they may not may vote sometimes for money but not all the time and uh, not all the people definitely so that was useful i am now going to throw three rapid fire questions at you okay okay yeah right. first question what is the success rate of a politician i would say very minuscule not even 1% if 1%? you if you uh, if, uh, if you take in terms of uh, elected representatives i'll give you a small example okay just to make why why i'm saying so in every uh, region uh, in india at least there are at least three or four major political parties and with my experience i can tell during uh, elections every party minimum has 25 or 30 aspirants or applicants not even aspirants applicants if there are four parties so you easily have 100 applicants for every party only one will be the candidate so there will four candidate out of 100 and then only one get elected wow. that's that's my understanding <laughs> when it happens success rate in the sense if if you calculate in the time period then in my case it, it hasn't happened for 12 long years so it may again take 2 3 4 or 5 years you you cannot really say with certainty that this is what it is going to be unless you have been elected and you are again into same position there are people who get elected for eight or 10 times continuously i i have known people like that and there are people uh, who never got elected so it is very uncertain its success rate is highly low and uh, you can say disappointing sometimes too <laughs> so if someone's actually getting into something like this they should know what they're getting in for where 
the chances of getting elected are less than 1% and there is a huge yeah. competition that you are fighting against and the <laughs> you know, and, and the time taken to the, achieve this success is also unknown uh, you really have to yeah. be very clear about getting into something like this <laughs> second question what message do you have for youth workers at the grassroots be very clear about your goals in as as in any profession you you have uh, typically two goals one is i'm not talking about getting money to sustain yourself i'm not talking about that money either you are there to make money or you are there to make your name as i said uh, if you decide that then the whole course of your activity whole course of i mean whole of your path kind of dip- become different okay if you are uh, in politics for money then it's completely different path if you are there for fame name representation then your path is different so be clear about it don't expect things to happen overnight in any case be sure about the ideology i'm uh, i'm sorry to say a lot of younger generation today doesn't know the uh, ideology of particular party political party and then is just sloganeering and shouting naras and you 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 think that you are part of that party you do become a part of that party but you don't understand why you are standing for so be clear about it if you want to become a people's neta then your action are going to be different if you are there to earn money then your actions are going to be. so be clear what you want and they are both kind of people so i wouldn't say that this is what you should choose or this is what you shouldn't choose you take whatever you decide for but be aware of uh, this and then also know the uh, once you are elected for example to a particular post know beforehand what is going to be your rights and what are going to be your duties so you you can uh, do that at least because i have seen a lot of people who doesn't even know what are they going to be their rights how how can uh, they force a board to do things for them i mean once you are elected then a lot of things happen according to the uh, set procedures in that particular board uh, or body local body you need to be aware of all those things last question what is the mm-hmm. end game for you manuj bali nahi hot hai samay hot balwan villain looti gopi ka wahi arjun wahi baan so the sense is the person is not powerful time is more powerful time is all powerful uh, after the demise of krishna then uh, arjun went to dwarka to take uh, all the ladies to bring them to hastinapur he was attacked by a bhil and defeated by him and he was the same person he had the same weapons but he didn't have the time so for me game is stay put as long as people want it and be uh, aware of that perception whether they want you or no the moment i get a perception that okay they don't want me here anymore for whatever reasons so uh, my purpose of work for them or whatever then okay i'm i'm not uh, going to be in active politics thank you so and, much for your time and for sharing the insights of uh, what goes on because clearly we are uneducated as far as what we see in the mainstream media there's so much going on in the background and i also get the sense that there is so much more that you're not saying so i'll catch up with you on a fu- future episode to get you on to it again <laughs> i'm glad that you liked it thank thank you very good much good luck and jai hind in a profession where the chances of being elected are less than 1% and where there is constant public scrutiny a different kind of weapon is at play soft power rahul says being clear about the purpose knowing your goals building consensus developing keen observation and really listening to people's needs are the ingredients to success as a politician come to think of it these apply to any profession minus 24 by 7 surveillance and constant judgment that's it from me do subscribe to the show on apple google spotify youtube and many more so you never miss an episode catch you next thursday with new guests and an invigorating chat until then be well